Welcome back to the channel. Been a long time, I know, but here we are. We're back. I'm going to do another product review. This one is for the X-Tool D5S uh, di Diagnostic Scanner. It's a four system diagnostic scanner, so it'll do the major stuff like engine, ABS, airbag. Um, it's also got 15 special functions, DPF regen, electronic park brake service um, mode to wind the calipers back. Um, it will also do the unjam procedure on um, Range Rover Sports and Discovery 3s, as well as um, driving the actuator to the mounting position or the latching position. Um, free updates for life, so use no subscriptions to pay. And um, looks like a pretty good bit of kit. I've used Extol products before, uh, a few years ago now. And um, I was quite impressed with it. So when Xtool reached out to me and said, can you review the our latest D5S? I was right up for it because I know they're good good stuff. So let's get into it. Let's have a look in the box and see what we can do with it. So here we go. Let's have a look. So we've got uh, a packing list and a quick start guide. That's the actual tablet itself. So it's, uh, it's quite small, and on the top there we've got, that's where you plug your diagnostic uh, cable into, and then we've got a memory card slot which is expandable to 32 gig, and there's a USB-C uh, for charging it. Also in the box we have 16 pin OBD cable to plug into your car, and a USB-C to USB to charge it up. Right, let's switch it on and have a look. Right, first thing, it's asking for Wi-Fi, so it's more than likely going to want an update, so... Right, I need to find a Wi-Fi password. Because I can't remember what it is. Okay, Wi-Fi password is in, let's hit that and hopefully it will connect. Right, who now wants me to register? So I don't have an existing account, so I'm going to have to register. Right, bear with me and I'll register it. Okay, so it's registered now. And uh, it says, congratulations, da 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 da. Activated successfully, subscription expiration date, not remaining days. Running away, right, start to use, bong. So on the home screen, we've got auto scan. Diagnosis, OBD2, special functions, updates, and more. So, auto scan, if we press that, it's probably just going to search for the vehicle. We won't do that until we plug it into a car. So, diagnosis, and it gives you a list of vehicles. So, it's on America at the moment. We're not interested in America, so we want to go to Europe. So, you go, list of European vehicles there. We've got Land Rover on it. And if we go China, and down to the bottom, it'll also do MG as well. Come back out of there. OBD2, it's going to try and communicate with the car. Um, basically, this is just like your normal just OBD scanners. It's just basically a code reader for engine if you go into OBD2. You can select the protocol there or you can auto scan it and it will all let me find the protocol that it, the car is using. Special functions, so we've got ABS bleeding, BMS reset, EGR relearn, electronic parking brake, steering angle sensor, GPF and DPF regeneration, service light, gearbox matching, suspension system, injector coding, headlight adjustment, window initialization, crank sensor relearn, TPMS reset and throttle matching. So 
some of these are probably not going to work on some models it all depends if the car supports it or not so that's pretty cool updates it will give you a list of all the updates available certain makes and models on here look and if you click on the little drop down box it will tell you what the uh, update is improved or added so for Dodge, look, add basic function and active test the 2022 Dodge Durango charger, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's worth um, keeping an eye on the updates. So if we hit updates here, it's now updating every single one. It's actually doing it quite quickly as well. So we'll just let that run. How uh, much battery we've got? 82%. That should be right. It does say in the destructions to plug it into power when you're running updates to stop it going flat, but we've got plenty of battery in. So I'll let it do that and then we'll come back. All right, so all these updates now are all done. All of them there, so that's good. All right, go back uh, on more. So we've got my account. This is the account that I use to set up. You've got workshop, so you can put your details in of your workshop garage or whatever and then when you do a diagnosis report that's all saved on there and settings basically just um, it's an android tablet so they're just like the android settings that you would find on an android phone or tablet and that is it let's get it plugged into a car and uh, obviously we'll have to use my car the mg3 and we'll see what it can do on that Right, so we're plugged into the car, and uh, we're going to have a, have a go. The airbag light's on on this. I deliberately haven't done anything with it, because I knew this tool was coming, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to test it out. So I know it's going to be one of the connections under the seat. I just don't know which one, so we'll have a look anyway. So we want to go diagnosis, um, and we're going to go down here to China, and then MG. Right, we'll automatically detect and it should come up with the systems that it can work with. There we go, there's the car. Okay. And it should, hopefully, automatic scan. Right, so we've actually got a fault code in the engine. And we've got a fault code in the airbag as well, which I knew about. So... Nothing in the ABS because it's green. Those two are orange. Let's have a look at the engine management first. I didn't realise I had a problem with that. Uh, intake valve control. The intake camshaft locking position operates unreasonably. Uh, well, I haven't had no engine light. So, uh, do you know what? I'm just going to clear it. Because the car still goes all right. All right, come out of there. Right, airbag. Which seat is it going to be? There we go, right side airbag resistance is too high. So let's have a look under the seat and um, see what we can find. Right, so the connector we're interested in is that one with the green plug. You can see it is on there. Let's just have a... <clears throat> Makes you wonder how they go open circuit and the plug's such a tight fit. I can't get it out. There we go. Mm -hmm, looks alright in there. What does it look like in the other end? Let's have a zoom in. Mm, that looks clean enough in there. Right, let's just plug it back in and see what happens. Eat on. Let's have a look now. Ignition on. Has the light gone off? Nah, it's gone off already. Look, without him clearing the code. So if we come back now, clear the code. 
Yes. Trouble code cleared. And now they're all green, there's no codes in it. So we just have a quick look through some live data. Let's start the engine a minute. So let's go into your engine management system. So we've got live data. And here you can get a list of what it's doing and Don't actually give me any figures. Oh, that's thought occurred, thought occurred. Just gives me close or open and doesn't give me any brake switch status. Oh, there we go. So anyway, there's various different um, live data things that we can look at. It just doesn't give me any figures though, it just says open or closed, it doesn't give me... Which is weird, I haven't seen anything for um, like engine speed or anything like that. There's loads in here. I see it at the bottom now. Right, anyway, there's nothing really we can do in there. Uh, let's have a look at the airbag. Can we monitor the resistances? No. So there we go. Now, if we come back out of here, finish that. And uh, um, and now the traction light has come on. What's going on now? Put a code in the dynamic stability. TPI relatively forward engine control module cam message. Plus, just put loads of codes. That's weird. Clear. I got warning lights on. Might not like it because I got the engine running. Let's just have the ignition on. Right, clear. Clear successfully. No warning lights. Maybe it didn't like it with the engine running. Right, now, when we come out of here, we should have a diagnostic report. So if we go into more diagnostic report, there we go. So there's two. So that will be the first one. Oh no, that's the second one we did. So it gives you all the fault codes. And the first one is that one. Gonna open. And there we go. Oh, that's all the live data that we went into. And down the bottom it should give us our fault code. Yeah, there you go, there's the fault code that was in the engine. And there's the airbag fault code. So you can save a diagnostic report to show your customer or whatever it is you're doing, or just to keep for your own personal reference if it's just for your own use, like. So, there we go. That's just an overview of the X-Tool D5S. And uh, for the money, I think it's going to get you out of trouble for most things. So here we are, the X-Tool D5S. Like I said uh, just a minute ago, 
for most things, it's going to get you out of trouble if it's just um, for your own personal use. Um, for a garage, there obviously is better ones out there, but then this is just an entry level scanner. Um, but for the money, it's better than one of these cheap, crappy OBD things you can buy for 20 quid, which literally just reads codes and clears codes, does nothing else. Um, with this, obviously, I can't test DPF region and things like that because my car doesn't have all that stuff. So, But what I will do is any future diagnostics that I do, I will be using this tool and put it to full use. Because the thing with scanners is you never really know what it can do until you want to go and do it. So any future diagnostics that I do, I will be using this and there will be a video on that. So you would be able to appreciate it a bit more. It's difficult to do just like a, um, a review um, because like, all right, I did have a thought on the car, but it was nothing really involved. So that is what it is. So any future, any future problems we have, this is what I'm going to be using. There's a link down there in the description of where you can get one of these. They've got a Black Friday sale on at the moment. Go get your hands on one. I think they're about 130 quid at the moment. I think for the money, you can't fault it. If there was anything I would would like to improve on this, um, but again, it, it comes as a it, it's, it's a price point, isn't it? It'd be nice if it had a little flippy up thing so you can hook it on the steering wheel. But you know, these are just minor things, and also it would be nice if it had a case that it could go into because there isn't a case. And obviously, in a workshop environment, it's nice to have stuff like this in a in a case to stop it from getting damaged. Other than that, I got no, I ain't got a bad thing to say about it. I want to try it on some other cars to see what more we can do. So they'll be coming up in future videos if I get a chance to have a stab at diagnostics on something else other than my car. So that's it. Link down in the description if you want to get, get yourself one. Thanks to Xtool for sending me this, for having a look at. Quite impressed with it. And, uh, and on that note, I'm out of here. I'll see you next time. All the best.